Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Sunday, November 5th, 2017. And the subject of this video is the Pacific Gas and Electric Stairway of Power. And this is an overview because it's a very big subject, but I wanted to uh, introduce you to the, the general idea of what the Stairway of Power is. And I'm going to go to this map that I've used for many of my videos. It shows a good view of right here is Lake Oroville and the South Fork, Middle Fork, and North Fork of the Feather River. And then you can see the West Branch and the East Branch of the Feather River uh, going into the North Fork. And then way up here is the Upper North Fork. And I'll just enlarge it so that you can see uh, right here is the Upper North Fork and Lake Almanor is up there. And I call this PG&E territory because uh, most of what's going on up there is, uh, uh, belongs to PG&E. And if we go here to this graphic, which is part of a relicensing document for one of the PG&E projects, uh, you can see the whole stairway of power. And the reason that they use the Upper North Fork for these hydroelectric power projects is, is there's a 35 foot drop for about every mile of river. So it's really uh, a good place to generate power. And so they're able to use that water uh, over and over again and continually create power as the water makes its way from the Sierra Nevada mountain range uh, all the way down to the Oroville Reservoir. And there are three projects up there that uh, are licensed to PG&E, and the licensing entity is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, F-E-R-C, and the same one that licenses uh, the uh, Oroville Dam and uh, the, uh, the uh, hydropower plant at Oroville, I should say. And... Um, the the projects go by the numbers that uh, the the FERC issues to them, and the Upper North Fork project is project number P dash twenty one oh five, and that one goes from Lake Almanor all the way to the Rock Creek Cresta project, and they uh, if you look here. The Mountain Meadows Reservoir is also up there, and that water flows into Lake Almanor. It goes through the Hamilton Branch Powerhouse. But that, that whole area up there is not licensed. It, it, for some reason, it does not require a license at this time, but the water does travel from Mountain Meadows Reservoir, also known as Walker Lake into Lake Almanor and Lake Almanor does not the Canyon Dam does not have a powerhouse there so what they did um, Canyon Dam was actually built to provide a more steady water supply for the uh, powerhouse that was down here just above Lake Oroville um, I just did a video on it, uh, the Lost Powerhouse, because that's the Big Bend or Lost Plumas Powerhouse that is now submerged underwater because when the reservoir started fill to fill um, it, at Lake Oroville, um, that water backed up along the North Fork and they had to sacrifice that power plant. So 
that's why they had built Canyon Dam was to have water storage and uh, just have a steady supply of water for that powerhouse. And that was uh, Canyon Dam uh, at Lake Almanor was built around 1910. And then around 1920, they built uh, the Caribou Powerhouse. You can see right here, there's two powerhouses caribou number one and number two and they built caribou number one on butt creek which um you can see uh butt creek is up here and it comes along here and so they built that powerhouse to uh to create power and the way they got water there was they built a tunnel from Lake Almanor to Butt Creek. And it is Butt Creek. It doesn't have an E on the end, and and, and it's called Butt Creek. So um, anyway, they built the Prattville Tunnel to bring water from Lake Almanor to Butt Creek to increase the capacity for power generation out of that um, Caribou Powerhouse number one. And then um, later, in about 1924, they built a dam on Butt Creek to uh, increase water storage and power capacity. So then they ended up with this, this uh, reservoir, the Butt Valley Reservoir. And then, and then if you look down here, they did another project dam uh, they built Belden Forbay was created in 1958 to serve as an after bay for that uh, caribou powerhouse, number one. And while they were at it, that was 1958, they built caribou powerhouse number two just to, you know, increase the, the uh, capacity. And then by then, like 10 years later, they built, or uh, Oroville Dam was built and created the Oroville Reservoir. And so right after that, in 1969, PG&E built the Belden Powerhouse, which is up here, to replace the uh, capacity that had been lost when the Big Bend Powerhouse was submerged. So, um, and then was 1985 when they built the Oak Flat Powerhouse. Uh, that one was built to generate uh, power from fishery releases. So they had, to, you know, they're mandated to take care of the fish. So they they uh, took advantage of, of uh, that water to create power as well. So that is that Upper Feather River P2105 project, which encompasses this whole area. And then the next uh, project, or this project right here, Rock Creek Cresta project is P-1962 is its license number. And that has um, uh, the Rock Creek Reservoir and a powerhouse. And then also the Cresta Reservoir and Powerhouse. And the, the, the third one is the Poe Project. And that one is um, P-2107. And it has a reservoir and powerhouse. And that's just about five miles above uh, the Oroville Reservoir. So that's the... Um, the general scope of the whole stairway of power and they utilize that water over and over and there is an incredible amount of moving parts to this system and there's a story behind every one of these uh, dams and reservoirs there are a lot of tunnels and uh, water conveyances that have uh, been kind of patched together over the years and they've increased the the 
size of some of these dams over time uh, to just take advantage of, of all the uh, power capacity that they can. PG&E is Pacific Gas and Electric. It's incorporated in California uh, since 1905. And it's one of the largest combined natural gas and electric companies in the United States. Um, it provides service to over 16 million people in Northern and Central California. So I really just wanted to give you an overview of this. I think I might be digging a little deeper into some of these areas. It's, it's complex and it's kind of hard to figure out. Most of the stuff I've told you today, you could read on Wikipedia or, you know, elsewhere. But I think it's helpful to see it and have it um, explained while you're looking at a map. Uh, and also keep in mind since, you know, rainy season has started and then we'll go into snowmelt season in the spring. And it's important to know that if you're looking at water flows and what's coming into Lake Oroville, just don't count the water twice. Some of this you have to take into consideration that the water that comes along this upper North Fork is um, it's the same water uh, uh, being used over and over again to generate power. And so I really appreciate your views and I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you later.